Welcome to Mounting a Missionary Baptist Church located at 1501 West Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Way, Dayton, Ohio, 45402, Pastor Corey J. Pruitt. Our phone number is 937-222-0867. Our website is mountingandbaptist.org where you can watch our Sunday morning services and other services on live stream. Like us on Facebook. And our motto is, because we care, we share. On the behalf of Pastor Cora J. Pruitt and the Mount Eden Church family, we say, Somebody say conversation, conversation. And, presentation. and presentation. 
Do you not know that your conversation and presentation is what literally causes others to come to Christ? That's why I'm admonishing you to show your excitement about God is because it's your conversation come on, and your presentation. Look at Ruth, watch this. After the death of Elimelech, after the death of Malon and Chilion, watch this. Naomi says, after experiencing such disgusting environments, watch this. She says, I'm going back home. She says, I'm going, come on, back home. She says, I'm going back to Bethlehem, the house of bread, come on. Yeah. I'm going back there because I've experienced so much difficulty here. Right. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. She admonishes Orpah and Ruth to go, or rather to stay, or to go back to their families. Come on, I'm in the text, I'm preaching better than y'all should. Go back to your families because, listen, I'm going, I'm going home. And, listen, I don't necessarily want, it's not that I, I don't want, I don't like you, it's not that. Listen, but you need to go with your families and where your families are. But watch this. Fortunately, somebody say fortunately. fortunately. Naomi had made such an impact with her conversation and her presentation that led Ruth. To, oh God, help me out. I know what I'm talking about. To, to, to say words like she did. Ruth said, listen up. Don't tell me to leave you. She says, please, don't tell me to leave you. What's this? Or return uh, uh, from following after thee. What's this? She says, for wherever Come on. you go, I'm going to go. Are you with me here? Wherever you decide to lay your head. Yeah. Now remember that this was a disgusting situation simply because they were in a place of poverty. Their husbands had died. They were in a disgusting place. Come on, give me this next, the, the next part of it. Wherever you are, that's where I want to go. Are you with me here? And then it talks about, listen, it goes to the extreme to suggest that as Ruth says these type words to Naomi. It's an indication, watch this. It's an indication that she evidently had done something or said something that made Ruth become attracted to her lifestyle. Because I got news for you. Nobody in their right mind is going to tell somebody wherever you go. I'm going if there's nothing significant about it. Wherever you lodge, there I'm going to lodge. If there's nothing, come on, significant about it. Are you with me here? She said, thy people shall be my people and thy... Look at what she says. Listen, that's strong. She changed from polytheistic to monotheistic. In that, watch this, she moves from many gods that she knew. But she changes her mind and her thrust in life to be what Naomi was because Naomi's God evidently did something for Naomi. You want to talk to me here? Come on, come on. That the gods that she called on, all of those different gods, couldn't do but the one God. I don't want to have, have somebody here can help me do this. That listen, out of all the gods that exist, my God is the God who opens doors and makes ways out of nowhere. See, if Jake had been here, y'all would have to pay about 20 grand. <laughs> if Jake had been here, some of y'all would listen to what I'm saying. I'm telling you, watch this. I'm not feeding you any junk. Let me help you. So what happens is, is that in the midst of this, I see in my theological mind, I see authentic relationship being developed. Watch this. The only way one can authenticate relationship is by conversation. And presentation. All right, all right. Now, one thing you need to look at this is that in the midst of, as we declared in the Wednesday and Saturday Bible study, that authentic means real. Authentic means original. 
Authentic means, come on, uh, it has evidence or proof of being what it is. See, because some people say they say. They look like they're saying. But the reality is, watch this, is the underlying effect that, listen, when you're saved, excuse me, sanctified, guess what? It ought to show up on your life. So Naomi, watch this, I need you to see that I believe that Naomi did something that, watch this, that everybody in evangelism is not necessarily doing. Here it is. I believe that Naomi did not go to any extremes to preach a sermon under a tent. Come on. She didn't, listen, she didn't have a tent to preach under. She didn't necessarily have a, a sanctuary to preach about her God. However, her life and her lifestyle, come on, talk to me, was the evidence of the presence, come on, talk to me, somebody, of the presence of the Almighty God. Why? It's because when you look back at the times in which they lived, you must understand that they lived during the times of the judges. They lived when the judges ruled. What does that mean? There was an absence of a king. Yes, right. And in the absence of a king, there was a spirit or mentality of lawlessness. In other words, which more people were doing whatever they were big enough and grown enough to do. They lived through a season. Watch this. That they had to endure some distressful times, some difficult and disgusting moments. However, Naomi evidently stayed faithful to her God. Amen. Amen. Not only did she stay faithful to her God, but you got to look at it because Elimelech moved them from their hometown, their place of complacency, and they lived in a land, or rather the land of Moab, and the text says, theologians suggest that they lived there for a number of ten years. Here it is, you got to get this. Now, I told you this, but I need you to get it. Now, what's this? Write the word ten, a T-E-N. Write down the number ten, one, zero. What's this? You must understand that Ruth's underlying garment is all predicated on, watch this, the providential plan of God. Because you're going to see the word redeemer, come on, kinsman's redeemer, and everything about Ruth has to do with the plan of redemption. I tried to tell some of you, but I can't teach some of you. Some of you say I can't tell you anything. That's okay. But let me go to you will listen. The number 10 is the divine number of redemption. Can I help you to understand something? Sometimes God will put you in disgusting areas in your life in order to show his redemptive ability. I'm talking about God will allow you to get in some messes in your life. Just so he can pull you out of it and show the devil that listen here, truly they were in a mess, but thanks be to God because they're connected to me. I redeem them every time, make something out of them, and I make them be what the devil said. They couldn't have no reply in this place. I'm talking about a disgusting mess, a disgusting place. Stressful place, Miss Flora Damons. One thing you must understand is that they developed this. Oh, God help me. I can't be close to you. You know, I'm spitting on everybody. Oh, God help me. Lift your spiritual umbrellas up. God, watch this. Allow them to go through these difficult times, this distressful moment. But Naomi must have trusted in God. I'm sure she took care of her husband. Come on. She took care of her husband until his death. She was close to her sons, but she didn't get in their business. Come on, talk to her. Because Orpah and uh, Ruth were connected to her. And one thing about in-laws, y'all know the history of in-law, don't you? Come on, say amen. Sometimes it's a difficult procedure, a situation when you're dealing with in-laws. Some of y'all are in-laws, 
And some of you are the in-laws who literally become the outlaws. You know what I'm <laughs> because sometimes being in-laws is so difficult that we try to get into the situation, the circumstance, without allowing God, come on, to be the one to work it out. And you become an outlaw because you try to fix every situation. You can't fix it all. Let your children go through what they go through. They have challenges in whatever it is that they're going through. They only ever did they had such an aura about her that it was so attractive darling long that listen, Ruth and Orpah, they were attracted to this woman. It was something special about her. Are you with me? In the midst of their authenticating their relationship, they found themselves in a place of yeah, these disgusting measures all around them because there was a sense of lawlessness. However, Naomi still exemplified the presence and she was an example of what God meant for a, 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 a what's that, uh, Proverbs 31 woman? Come on, she was a wise woman. She was a, she was a virtuous woman. Are you with me? Thus causing these women to be connected to her in a way that, listen, one of them, watch this, did not want to go back with her relatives. All right, all right, now, look at the story as it unfolds. As Naomi prepared to go back into Bethlehem, watch this, the house of bread, Elimelech was connected to a fellow called Boaz. Right, right. Somebody say Boaz. Boaz. See, if I went to the extreme that, uh, what's his name, went to, uh, I can't think of this white minister, man, he talked about all the other asses in the Boaz family. <laughs> uh, Y'all put me out if I start talking about them. Are you with me here? So watch this. I think today, I got about, uh, give me just a few more minutes, because I've lost track of time. Watch this. I believe that in the process of this moment, I believe that Naomi had made such uh, an effect on Ruth that she wanted to stick around because there was something significant, something special about this woman. Somebody shout this woman. This woman. Now, one thing you must see is that, listen, uh, uh, evangelism can be done in many ways. In fact, I believe, I believe that through one's life, come on, it can be exemplified. Another's language, what they say, I believe, come on, that it can be exemplified. Are you with me here? However, I also believe that it can be represented through the loyalty that a person has in the midst of difficult circumstances. When you learn what it means, come on, to hang in there. I'm talking about those of you who have come in contact with some strenuous situations and it seemed as if it wasn't going to work, but you hung in there and believed God at the darkest moments. <laughs> have you ever been in a dark moment in your life and you had to literally trust God at a time when you thought that things were literally going to fall down? Everything was going to be, come on, disturbed and destroyed, but because of your faith in God, you stood there and said, Great is thy faithfulness. Come on, you said, Oh Lord, my God, when I lost some wonder, come on, you said, Consider all. And you said, How great thou art. So one thing about it is, is that uh, I, I think. Uh, theological mind again, bring out a few items that may help you to see evangelism as well as the relationship, the authentic relationship that brought root to this juncture. Number one, please write this down. An authentic relationship is one that works through the circumstances. I told you again, Ruth and Naomi and Orpah, Chilion, Maynard, and Eliminate were dealing or rather living in times of the judges, there was no king, there was chaos everywhere. And they had to live with, first of all, this legal and political chaos. But then, further down the line, they have to deal with the stresses of death. Because all of their husbands have died. And here they are, drifting in a land where their provisions, come on, have all disappeared. Those men worked for their wives and things of that nature, but here is a fall in the 
group. Because these men now are all, come on, dead. But Naomi evidently showed some type of expression that made Ruth attractive to the fact that, listen, you've been trusting in this God of yours through all of this stuff I'm talking to you. You've been trusting in your God through the sickness of your husband and, and you've been trusting and that's why Sandra and, and Rhonda are attracted to you simply because you some kind of would have the ability to hang in there with a few tears every now and then. But the reality is, is that you prayed to your God and when your God answered and showed you strong, you don't look like what you've been through. So now they're more attracted to your God because you hung in Tell somebody to say, neighbor, hang in there. Tell them, I know it's rough, I know it's tough, but you better hang in there. Hey, you may experience some, some bumps in the road, some, some turbulence, but guess what? You better hang in there. Come on, tell somebody to hang in there. Because these, these relationships, if you please, they are, they, these relationships are, are those that, that works through the circumstances. This was a time when the judges ruled, which further signifies the time when there was an absence of a king, there was total chaos. So living, watch this, in these times were a task. Somebody say a task. Yes. However, Naomi's choice was to live through the circumstances without complaining. So she was in a predicament where she had something that God had strengthened her with. God had given her some supernatural power to deal with the challenges. And because of that, others were gone authentically connected to who she was. What am I telling you? I'm telling you that the absence of some type of expression when you're going through what you're going through, if you and your countenance looks like the circumstance, you're not doing God's will. I just said something, you missed it. I said that if you look like what your circumstances come on, declare, you're not doing God's will. What, does that, what, what am I saying? I'm saying that everybody here knows that Job picked it up and said that man that's born of a woman is born a few days. However, they are full of trouble. Come on. But David picked it up and said, I'm so glad. You know what he said? That trouble don't last always. Are you with me here? I, I know that. I listen, I, I know that there are those of you who know that, that Paul picked it up and said, for we know that all things work together for the good to them that are called according to his purpose. So what you have to do is Sister Charles Ella, talk to me, walk through with a smile on your face. Yes, yes. Came in announcing and pronouncing that all is well. Yes, right. Sometimes not feeling the best, but still walking and declaring all is well. Come on, talking about the fact that listen up, even in the midst of my circumstances, I'm not defeated. That's it, Sister Wanderlyn, walking, uh, trying to hold on to something, if you will, to just keep up with your parents. And I know you can't keep up with them. Come on. Here's the reality. Hey, what happens is, is that in the midst of it all, God has been, come on, my rock in a weary land. He's been the road of shell. He's been everything that we've ever needed. One thing about being from down south, and I think I told you all about this, and it's a very, very significant detail, Brother Richard, because I think you're from Detroit and you don't have the same pleasure. Let me help you. <laughs> <laughs> we have Sister Bootsy Neal. Well, you got a little Alabama in your blood, but here's what happens. We have Deacon Tom, what's known as lightning bugs. Yeah, you may have some. We got real deep. Watch this. <laughs> I want to show you something significant about a lightning bug, and you need to be connected to this because a lightning bug, one thing I've seen is many people to go and poke holes in a jar. Mm. They will capture the bug. Come on, talk to me, somebody. And in the midst of that bug being captured, guess what? One thing that's significant about it is that no matter where he is, his life. Come on, Doc. It's still shy. Yeah. Oh, another significant piece about it is that I've seen people down home 
some mean people. I mean, to take something and smush him across the wall and smear him all down the wall. But oh, even in the midst of him being smeared on that wall and being confined to that place, one thing they couldn't take from him, his life. What am I telling you? I'm trying to make you know that whatever the circumstances are, Thank you for joining us for yet another broadcast here at the Mount Enon Missionary Baptist Church, Dayton, Ohio. We want to welcome you to get this message in its entirety. A seed of $3 for the MP3, $6 for our CDs, and $10 for our DVDs. And trust me today, the services and messages at the Mount Enon Church are life-changing. And please come back next week to view our broadcast. If you'd like to get these products, why don't you call 937 two 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 zero eight six seven and then if perhaps you don't want to call get on our website at www.mountainbaptist.org and i promise we'll get this product out to you right away thank you so much for joining and please return <laughs>